Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Nathan Gobes, filling in for Jeffrey Davis this morning. I want to first thank MTP Software. They're the leader in the sports uh, and entertainment CRM industry, and uh, we're really grateful for them building us this wonderful studio here in Natick. And our next guest, John Luca Dinovi, CEO of X Surgical. Welcome. Good morning. So uh, we were uh, chatting for a few moments before we turned on the microphone, and uh, you wanted to talk to us about the technology that you guys are producing, and we'll get into a little more about the company and your background as well. Sure. Do okay. Uh, let's start perhaps from my background. Maybe sure. this way. Oh yeah, let's do that. Um, well, I moved in this country about uh, ten years ago. I am. Uh, an electronic engineer by background with a PhD in robotics applied to surgery and I've been spending most of my entire research career um, uh, doing research in uh, medical simulation, surgery simulation, uh, computer vision and um, in surgical robotics. So I'm currently um, a director of the medical device and simulation laboratory at Mass General Hospital. I'm a Harvard Medical School faculty. And uh, yeah, I've been always uh, keeping one hand on the business side and uh, uh, scouting novel technologies and uh, helping companies from abroad to approach the market of North America. And uh, in doing this uh, search, I ended up um, colliding with, uh, with this surgical robotics company, which was uh, initially funded uh, by a former employee of the GPL, Jet Propulsion Lab at NASA, wow. and uh, he was uh, developing a surgical robot that was meant to be deployed on the International Space Station. Wow. <clears throat> it's a pretty, uh, pretty old story. Then this professor uh, received uh, um, a professorship uh, from the University of Verona, so he essentially, uh, with other folks, uh, incorporated the initial company in Italy, a company that uh, uh, developed uh, a second generation of the robot. Hmm. and was ready to compete with uh, with uh, Intuitive Surgical and uh, other uh, surgical robotics company. But then the problem mm -hmm. was that the crisis hit this company. And then the company stopped. So during my search, I found this company. I do my background. I decided to review a little bit what was the initial mm -hmm. mission and what was the technology and bring everything back to the United States. So <clears throat> why I think that... Um, what we do at X-Surgical is meaningful. Um, well, first of all, because we are trying to push on the market a product that is um, a new paradigm of surgical robots. So far, all surgical robots have been like closed solutions. So I sell you the robot, I sell you the tools, I sell you everything. Right. Well, now we want to, you know, the, we want to explore a different paradigm where I push out the surgical robot with some tools, ob obviously, but then open my system to mm -hmm. other third parties, other companies that they can come and uh, push in, inside my platform, other surgical instruments, other type of procedures, and make sure that my system is able to perform many more procedures than all the others mm. available on the market, uh, also with the participation of everybody else, in the attempt to make the surgical robotics more cost effective. Mm -hmm. Today, the problem of surgical robots is that they are affordable for big hospitals. But if you don't have enough patients, right. and the smaller you are in hospitals, sm yeah, if you are afford. in small towns in the middle of the country, you will never be able to access this kind of uh, technology. So you have to move and perhaps move your entire family mm. in proximity of a big hospital. Well, so having more procedures, you can have more patients. So even in a smaller hospital, you can have more uh, more patients. Plus, we uh, we are developing a system that is also portable and is uh, uh, very suitable for mobile settings. When I talk about mobile settings, I mean that you can literally have mobile operating rooms. Wow. Uh, which means that smaller hospitals that they cannot afford to buy and maintain a, a robot, they can share the robot between multiple districts so you can have a truck trailer that is moving depending from where the patients are and if something happened such such as a disaster like an earthquake something like this mm -hmm. you will have also a surgical robot already in a mobile setting that can be deployed uh, yeah. where it's needed the most uh, but what kind of procedures we can do well if you want to also respond to disasters, you can't just do laparoscopy, this kind of stuff, because they are not really 
uh, the kind of injuries that you have on the field. So you also have uh, the needs mostly for open surgery, so for uh, limbs, face, you know, mm -hmm. the outside mm -hmm. of the body. And so we can leverage essentially our, our technology to do this kind of procedures and to perform high precision surgery trying to compensate the mismatch of a number of procedures that today you have to perform wearing loops. So where you need to magnify, right. but you still use your hands that don't have that level of precision. And this becomes also suitable, obviously, for uh, military missions. So mm -hmm. if you want to go on the, close to the battlefield, you can deploy the system inside a container, inside a, a tent hospital, and then uh, bring these technologies also in third world countries where there are not infrastructures. Yeah. So many more opportunities with respect to what was the past. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a very revolutionary uh, sort of take on surgical robotics. As you said, I think almost everybody thinks of them in the, the biggest of hospitals and, and those only. Um, so to, to get that out into the field, to get that out into smaller hospitals, that is definitely really unique. Um, do you want to talk more about uh, the company and uh, where you're you're at uh, with this stage now? You, you said you were, I believe, looking for Series A. Is that correct? Yes, we are uh, currently running the Series A, trying to collect funds to uh, bring the current prototype to um, production stage. And uh, so we are aiming to complete this uh, conversion uh, within the next uh, between 18 months, two years. Great. So to be um, suited for the market, uh, for the military market immediately the two after the two years and then uh, right after the certification achievement uh, obviously uh, start populating the the civilian markets mm. yeah i would think the the angle of the military is is very interesting and uh, again you know that most people think of robotics as it's it's only inside the massive hospitals and so but the amount of military bases U.S. alone, the rest of the world around uh, around the country that could now be deploying these surgical robotics uh, of yours uh, could be a huge market. Well, you need to 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 start from the consideration that a lot of medical technologies at the at, at the very beginning mm -hmm. start in the medical in the military field. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, uh, instruments and equipment that today we use in the hospitals they come from research, military research trying to, to meet what are their needs. Interesting. Would you, um, and now I think you talked about this a little bit, but would you be developing the same product for military or civilian? Well, the core of the of the technology is pretty much the same. Obviously, if you want to deploy these on the battlefield, it needs to be a little bit more rugged, need to, to think a little, bit, a little bit more about serialization and also... Um, reconsider a little bit the design of the of the surgical instruments that you install because if it needs to be portable it does mm -hmm. not make sense if it needs to use a lot of disposable parts otherwise you need another right a series of tracks full of uh, surgical instruments so you need to have a system that is compact and mm -hmm. so it's slightly different uh, but the other important aspects are that uh, we are also trying to introduce AI in the surgical robotics, mm. trying to make the system more and more autonomous. Obviously, these kind of functionalities will not go on the market immediately because of the FDA uh, regulations that are still pretty unclear mm -hmm. in this matter. Makes sense. Uh, and I would think that aspect adds to your ability to uh, market this to uh, uh, other countries, smaller hospitals, perhaps places where uh, the specialization with these tools is not as high, uh, the doctors that are not as familiar with this kind of technology. Well, that becomes actually a very important uh, aspect. I mean, we are not developing a, a classified technology that right. is meant to be used only in the U.S. It's absolutely something to, to fix people, <laughs> Yes. so to, to help people. So definitely the, the, the better diffusion, the better it is. And like I said, we are really trying to target the places where no one else wants to go, not because it's easy, uh, but because it's, I think, a good and important milestone in this field. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important. Um, there are maybe some companies that haven't gone after those, those sectors, but what you guys are doing uh, to, like you said, I think make it more open and uh, the t make the technology more accessible uh, after releasing is uh, very helpful to the market overall. Yeah, I want to speed up that, you know, that circle of feedback innovation mm -hmm. and make it faster, not depending only from us, but uh, also bringing in inside, you know, 
the intelligence of many other companies that are very focused and they probably are the best experts in very particular procedures. So for we would have to invest right. a lot of money to get where they already are right. and we give them the opportunity to come in the field of the surgical robotics sharing the platform. Yeah, that's great. It, uh, it comes with a great message, both uh, on the medical side, the message there, you know, that, that you want to make this open and accessible, but also uh, entrepreneurially, uh, that uh, other uh, people can access the technology that you guys are creating. Yeah, it is. And um, as a scientist, I think that for me, it's like a it's like a footprint, you know? So it's something that you want to do, not only because you want to think uh, about the very lucrative aspect, not only about that, obviously, but mm -hmm. uh, also about the impact on, uh, on society. That's wonderful. Um, and we'd love to have you return and talk to us about the company's progress and the uh, technology's progress as time goes. But uh, in the meantime, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, whether uh, because they've taken interest in your Series A or if they're maybe just interested in the development of the product, uh, how could they get in touch with uh, X Surgical? Uh, they can definitely go on our website, which is xsurgicalrobotics.com and uh, send us a first email through the form on the website and uh, someone will follow up. Great. Thanks. I want to remind everyone we've been speaking with John Luca DeNovi, CEO of X Surgical. And uh, this has been Radio Entrepreneurs. We'll be back with more stories after this. Cool.